Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. For today's video, I'm going to be teaching you a little bit of first year degree maths. Quite a few of you have asked in certain comment sections and on Instagram and things, what do you learn when you start your maths degree? And I thought today I would take the perfect opportunity to uh, talk you through some of the maths that I've learnt. In this video, we're going to be having a look at Fermat's Little Theorem. We're going to be having a look at modulo arithmetic and how we can use Fermat's Little Theorem to help us prove things like this. The question today is to use Fermat's Little Theorem to show that 5,555 to the power of 2,222 plus 2,222 to the power of 5,555 is divisible by 7. How on earth do we do that? Well, let's jump in to the maths. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to a little bit of modulo arithmetic. Now, before we jump into me explaining anything, I am bound to get something wrong because I am a student myself. This was from Foundations of Pure Maths, a course that I did in semester one, and it's quite theory-based, a lot about primes, about numbers, about uh, set theory, lots like that, and uh, I'm probably going to get something wrong. Don't shout at me if I do, I might not explain something perfect, I am not a teacher, I'm a student learning this myself, I'm just sharing my experience on the internet. Okay, so I have got the solution that I did previous to this video up here, just in case I need it, but we're going to start off by looking at modulo arithmetic. So it works a little bit differently to normal arithmetic. Modulo, have I spelled that right? Yes, I have. Okay, modulo arithmetic. We have this notation and we, we uh, reduce modulo to three letters mod. And we say that A is congruent to B mod M. So A is congruent to B modulo M, but we just say mod for short, if and only if. Now, if and only if is a double arrow. It basically says, okay, this statement here on the left will kind of imply the statement on the right, and because it's a double arrow, it works the other way as well. So, A is congruent to B mod M, if and only if M divides, and I'm going to use some notation here, we just use a straight vertical line, that says M divides, and we take the difference, A minus B, okay? You might not understand this fully, and to be quite honest, you're not doing a university maths degree course, so don't worry if you don't understand it fully. But you can see, A is congruent, that's how we uh, say that's um, three-lettered equal sign, if you like. It also is the identity sign, but in this case, with modular arithmetic, we say congruent. A is congruent to B mod M, if and only if M divides the difference of A and B. Let's do a quick example. Is 25 congruent to 5 mod 4? Well, I'm basically asking, does 4 divide 25 minus 5? Because in this case, we can see M is 4, B is 5 and A is 25, so does 4 divide the difference? So that does 4 divide 20, and um, that's the question. And yes, of course it does, because 4 times 5 is 20. So this statement here is true. Okay, let's have a look at another example. The next one is, is 13 congruent to 9 mod 3? So does 3 divide 4? Uh, that's the question, and clearly, no, that is not true. So 13 is not congruent to 9 mod 3. Now, we're being asked to do this question using Fermat's little theorem. What on earth is that? If we have got P, and P is a prime number, a prime number means it's only divisible by itself and 1, and if A is just any integer, then we can set this up. We can say our any integer a to the power of our prime p is congruent to a mod p. So in other words, what we can say, we can say, well, that uh, implies, or if and only if, this is true. p divides a to the p minus a. And we can also adapt Fermat's little theorem and say, and if p does not divide a, so here we've got our division symbol with a cross through it, that means does not divide, so p does not divide a, then this is true. We can take our any integer, we can take a, we can raise it to the power of p minus 1, and that's going to be congruent to 1 mod p. So, 
First thing I'm going to have a look at is, oops, I need my pointer. Perfect. First thing I'm going to have a look at is 5555 five, five, or 5555. Five. And we're going to consider that modulo 7, so mod 7. Let's split it up 7 times something and then add something else, okay? Because it's not perfectly divisible by 7. 5555 five, is 793 times 7, and then we need to add on 4. Now, if we consider this modulo 7, what we can say is, well, this number here is going to be a multiple of 7. And whenever we have a multiple of 7, modulo 7, that's just the same as 0 mod 7. So I can write that as 0 plus 4 mod 7. And then we know we don't really need the zero because what does that change? Nothing. So we can write that all on one line. 5,555 is congruence to 4 mod 7. Now what we need to say is, well, we didn't really want that. We had a power on here. 5,555 to the power of 2,222. Now, what did I say about Fermat's little theorem? I said if P does not divide A, then this is true here. Well, our P in this case is 7, and our A, we're looking at A here, A is 4. Now, I can say we know, and maybe I should write that above there actually, 7 does not divide 4. And so, we can say 4 to the P minus 1 from this statement up here, which is 6, is congruent to 1 mod P, which is 7. So now we're considering this. And what we want to do is we want to get this 2,222 something times 6 and then plus something if we need to. 2,222 is 370 times 6. So there's my times 6 part. And then I'm going to add on 2 to that because what we get here is 2,220 and I'm going to add 2. Then I can split that up using index law. So 5,555 to the 370 times 6 multiplied by 5,555 to the 2. We know in terms of modulo 7 that 5555 is congruent to 4. So I can replace that by 4, 370 times 6, 4 to the 2, and that is modulo 7. 7. 4 to the 6 is congruent to 1 mod 7. I've got a multiple of that here. Look, it's 4 to the 6, all to the power of 370. I've got 4 to the 6, 370 times, multiplied together. And so, that's just going to give me 1 when I deal with modulo 7. So I'll have 1 times 4 squared, modulo 7. Well, that is just 16, isn't it? So 16 and congruence mod 7. And then how many multiples of 7 can I take off 16 and still give me a positive? I can take off 7. That will give me, let's test my maths here, that will give me 9. I can take off another 7. That will give me 2. Right, so that's what we've got now. We've got 5,555 to the 2,222 is congruent to 2 modulo 7. I'm going to highlight that there. The reason we're doing modulo 7, by the way, is because we want it to be divisible by 7. Okay, now we're going to consider 2,222. What we're going to do is split that up into something times 7 plus something if we need to. Now, I'm going to do this on a calculator. I'm going to do 2,222 divided by 7, and we can say that is 317 times 7, and then we need to add something onto that. And we're going to need to add 3. What we will have is 2,222 is congruent to 317 times 7 plus 3, which is congruent, well, this is a multiple of 7, so we're dealing with modulo 7, so it's going to give me 0. So that's 0 plus 3, mod 7, and then that can be congruent, well, we don't need the 0, congruent to 3, mod 7. What that means is 7 divides 2,222 minus 3. Now, if we notice, I'm going to have a look at the 3 and I'm going to have a look at the 7. They are what you call co-prime. In other words, it's the adaptation of Fermat's little theorem. 7 does not divide 3. And so what we can say is 3 to the p minus 1, 3 to the 6 is congruent to 1 mod p, which is 7. So we get that and our a was 3. And that came from here. 
Fermat's little theorem. So we've also got that information now. So what can we do? Well, we can split up, and I'm looking at this number here, aren't we? Because that's our second term. We've done the base, now we need to think about the power. And that is equal to, if we multiply something by six, and then add something to get that number, it's 925 times six plus five. So, 2,222 to the 5,555 will be 2,222 to the 925 times 6 plus 5. I can split that up. Then I can say that is 3 to the 925 times 6 and 3 to the 5 because uh, we've got here... 2222 two, two, two is congruent to 3 modulo 7, and we are dealing with modulo 7 here. Then what we can do is we can say, well, right, that is a multiple of 3 to the 6. We've got 3 to the 6 multiplied by itself 925 times. So what I can do is I can write that as a 1 from this statement here, modulo 7. It's a 1 times 3 to the 5. Now, 3 to the 5, let me consult my notes, is 243 modulo 7. The multiple of 7 that is under that is 238. How many are we off? Well, 238, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. So we are off by 5. So it's going to reduce to 5 mod 7. And so 2222 two, two, two to the 5555 five, five, five is congruent to 5 mod 7. So now we've got everything that I need. The original statement was adding the two terms together. So let's do that. And if we deal with this in terms of modulo 7, we can just add these two together. So we get 2 plus 5, and that's mod 7. And then you might notice, well, 2 plus 5 is 7, so that is congruent to 7 mod 7. That is a multiple of 7. So how many 7s can I take off that? I can take 7 off, or just 1 7. I can minus 7 from it to give me 0. So that's congruent to 0 mod 7. What does this statement tell me here? Going back to our original definition, it tells me that 7 divides this minus 0, which was my b. We don't really need that minus 0. So I can just get rid of it. And it tells me that 7 here divides our two terms added together. Boom. Boom. That is what we needed to do. That was a little introduction to what university maths is like. Just again, I learned that in semester one. And to be honest, when I looked at this question again, I thought, oh God, I've forgotten that. I've actually found it quite useful to do this video because I've revised a little bit. If it didn't make sense, don't you worry. Hopefully you just enjoyed me rambling. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe down below. Let me know if you enjoy these types of videos because I will definitely do some more explaining different topics, some calculus maybe, I don't know. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very, very soon with a brand new video. I'm gonna go for a lie down. <laughs> Bye.